Alford referred to this very narrow point in the St. Johns River in what is the very core of downtown Jacksonville. The narrow section of the river is where cattle drivers used to bring their cattle to cross the river and ergo the name Calford stemming from that. The Calford was the general name of a place. The Native Americans called it Wakapalatka, which loosely translated the place of the cows crossing. So the English just called it Calford. And so it was natural that eventually a little town would be built at the Calford. This future town was named after Andrew Jackson, the then territorial governor of Florida and also future president. At the time that the locals chose to attach the name Jacksonville to the place that they were seeking to elevate, there's no evidence that he ever visited the town that is his name. When the documents of incorporation were established by the legislature 10 years later in 1832, Andrew Jackson was indeed by that point president of the United States. So it probably seemed as though it was wise to just let well enough alone and stick with Jacksonville. Jacksonville, it turned out to be a really interesting place because it was a crossroads. The river, the ocean, the railroads all led to Jacksonville. So by the time the end of the 1800s comes around, Jacksonville is the largest town in Florida. It's a hubbub of business and activity. So Jacksonville was set to become a great metropolis until that fateful day on May the 3rd, 1901, when Jacksonville caught fire. Probably the single most significant and influential event in the history of the city was its great fire of May 1901. The fire destroyed what was then almost the entire downtown core. They started to fight the fire, but it was unrelenting and unstoppable. The wind picked up to 15 miles an hour and blew waves of fire across this drying platform until the warehouse caught on fire and exploded casting little specks of moss up into the sky as the wind whipped up, blowing the moss toward the city of Jacksonville. The fire started around noon, and by two o'clock, the grand hotels in downtown Jacksonville were ablaze. By five o'clock in the afternoon, the smoke could be seen in the sky as far away as Raleigh, North Carolina. In Miami, there was an engineer on a ship looked up and saw two sunsets. One was in the west, and one was in the north, and the one in the north was Jacksonville on fire. On Saturday morning when they woke up and looked around, there was no more Jacksonville. 90% of downtown Jacksonville was totally destroyed, almost like the bomb had been dropped in Hiroshima. Instead of getting up and saying, oh, this is you know, the worst thing that could happen, they said, we're gonna fix this. The fire was bad enough, the destruction was bad enough, but what really made it a significant event is because the destruction opened up an opportunity for new development, new architecture, new ideas. The fact that there were all these opportunities in Jacksonville drew an influx of innovative young architects looking to make their mark and make a career. In fact, within two years after the fire, more buildings had been built in downtown Jacksonville than had existed before the fire. A young architect named Henry John Clutho, within two months he had come to Jacksonville with the idea that he would personally rebuild this city in his own technique. Clutho's magnum opus is the St. James Building. It was a full city block department store built by the Cohen brothers in downtown Jacksonville. When the department store closed, the city bought it and made it our city hall. Jacksonville City Hall and the St. James Building is truly one of the most beautiful city halls in America and it is also the largest prairie style building in the entire world. Jacksonville is also called Navy Town, thanks to three major naval bases located in the Jacksonville area. During World War I, shipbuilding in Jacksonville became this city's largest industrial employer. The Navy's role in Jacksonville has done nothing but grow ever since. The Navy combines to make up approximately one third of the political economy of Jacksonville and its region. This is inarguably a Navy city. The Navy is really a unifying force in Jacksonville. Jacksonville and Duval County are unique in the fact that they are one of only a few entities in the world that are consolidated into one government. Many people don't realize that Jacksonville was once the largest city in the world. For many years, Jacksonville's government was filled with corruption and inefficiency. 
And so to solve all that, Jacksonville became one of the first cities in the world to consolidate its county and city government. The only pure consolidated government in the state of Florida is that of Jacksonville and Duval County. It makes it unique and many argue that in addition to the Great Fire, that was uh, one of the most significant events in Jacksonville's history.